What is going on everybody? Welcome to today's video. Now this is not a video that I was hoping to make. I wasn't planning on doing this. Yeah, there's a lot of things wrong with this car and I guess we're gonna learn how to put a floor in a E46 today because this car needs every single corner of the floor replaced. Not a full floor replacement, obviously. I don't even know if they make panels and stuff for this car, but I'm just gonna bend up some sheet metal. I have a brake, I have a welder, and I have a, a little bit of skill sometimes. So this should go well. Uh, I forgot to film the intro. It's already done, it's gone well. Anyways, I'm just gonna get into it. We're gonna take the seats out, take the interior out, and then we will uncover the mysteries of this car, which really suck. And we're gonna see that right now. I just got both seats out now. So now I'm just gonna start peeling this carpet back, which doesn't look like it's gonna be very easy. It's a two piece carpet too, so that's kind of nice. Everything is extremely wet. This whole like floor is soaked. So I don't know why, obviously something's leaking, but I don't see, I mean like that is falling off. That's just a sunroof cover. Uh, I don't see any like stains like anywhere, I'm gonna Google it. Maybe it's like a common E46 thing. But anyways, I'm gonna get this carpet out. Hopefully I don't have to take a center console and all that crap out. But I mean, if I do, it's not the end of the world. So my GoPro cut out because it's the worst creation on planet Earth. And uh, I got the carpet out. Yeah. Oh, that went right through the floor. So yeah, this is terrible. As you can see, like, I don't know why, but all of this carpet and like, there's like really thick foam on the carpet. I'm, I'm assuming for like sound deadening and whatever. It's soaked. It's like sopping wet. This thing weighs like 30 pounds. Obviously been wet and an issue for a very long time. And it's completely rotted this whole corner out. Like this floor is like just sitting there. Yeah, I'm just gonna peel the whole floor up. Good Lord. Like, it looks like I even got into the seat brace, which is not great. <sighs> this car sucks, basically, is what I'm trying to get at. I still have not been able to get the front out. I'm gonna continue with that, maybe do some YouTubing and see if I can find a way of doing it without pulling the dash. I really don't wanna take the dash out, but like, I have to get the carpet out because this is insanely wet. But anyways, that sucks. Look at this. Oh my God, bro. It's like, oh my God. That's solid. Whoa, this thing's mint. Anyways, I did not expect this. I mean, when I bought the car, I didn't expect this, but when I saw underneath and the rocker, I expected something kind of like this, but this is like totally gone. I did not expect the seat rail to be rotted at all. I thought I could weld a piece in here to that. But realistically, like I keep saying it, but like I don't care about this car. So I think what I'm gonna do, cause this is all solid, it's just starting to like pull away from the body. So I'll probably cut this off here and I'll just make up like a rectangle piece, flat, whatever. Maybe run some beads in it just so it has a little bit of strength to it bend like a inch or whatever, inch and a half, maybe 90 all around the perimeter. Weld it up there, weld it there, weld it there, and then basically patch in a little area there back down. And then I have no idea what I'm gonna do for the seat bracket. I might check to see if the other one in the other car is fine. And just drill the spot welds, which is a ton of work. Obviously I wouldn't do this if like I wanted to have a nice E46 and like drive it on the street or like make a show car. I got the car for really cheap. And the other car I got really cheap too. So I'm gonna have like maybe three grand, probably a little bit less, 2,500 bucks in a hopefully like drift ready car, which you can't really beat nowadays, at least around here. So I'm just gonna keep going, probably cut this all out 
and then uh, just clean up the edges and whatever, see what we got and just keep going. One of the main reasons I wanted to use this car was because it had a full dash, full interior, and it was all together. And now I'm like <laughs> ripping it all out because I need to fix the floor. So yeah, I'm probably an idiot for doing this, but yeah, we're having fun. So I finally got the carpet out. Um, I didn't take the dash out, but I did just cut the carpet along the bottom of the dash there. Um, the reason I didn't want to take the carpet out was because I wanted to have like a full interior, like basically from here up. But as you can see from this side, mice got in this thing. So on top of all of this garbage, there's also like the worst smell ever. And once I lifted the wet carpet, it just smells awful in here now. And there's obviously mice living in here and just making a mess of everything. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I'm going backwards, but this side of the floor looks good. There's no hole. Um, but that side has a little hole up at the front. Yeah, I'm regretting this more and more as I go, but I'm just, I don't want, I don't want to turn back now. So I'm just going to keep at it. going to vacuum all this up and then I don't know, maybe spray it with something like Lysol or something. Cause it's, it's terrible. So it's the next day. I got everything out. Everything's dried out. I disinfected everything. There's actually a hole under the gas pedal. There's also holes over here. So I'm going to cut this whole section out and just make a nice rectangle, whatever piece with a little bend on it up. Weld that in, seam seal it. Um, make a little lip on this side, weld it to there, seam seal it. You won't really know because I mean, it's already seam sealed from the factory. This one is obviously the biggest one and the worst one. So I'm gonna start with making a patch for this one. And then obviously like there's still all of that too. I'm probably not gonna end up putting this carpet back in. We'll see if it actually does dry out. I don't wanna put the back in, but I would like to put the front in and I wanted carpet. I like the look of like a black carpet with like front seats and like a full interior in the front. I don't know. We'll see because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what it looks like inside. I'm going to start cutting this piece out and underneath. It's a good thing I stopped hitting it and it stopped ripping because there's brake lines and fuel lines right here. So I'm going to cut it off on this top edge here and then I'll have to do something with that part because it's a little bit rotten. But for now, I'm just going to worry about getting this piece made so i can kind of just drop it in and we'll see how that goes then i'll have to make some little pieces probably maybe one here in this corner and then that'll tie that into this and then it'll it'll all be pretty solid it should look half decent when i'm done i don't know what's wrong with this gopro i definitely need a new one i bought it like a year ago when i started making videos and stuff and just half the time i record a clip and then when i hit stop recording it just freezes and i lose my clip so anyways i cut this out this is about as big as it has to be. I think what I'm gonna do is try and butt weld it against this edge, which I know right here is still rotten and it sucks, but there's the brake lines and the fuel lines right there. So I don't wanna mess with that. And once I get all of this solid and that solid, that little bit, I can just seam seal and it'll be like good enough. And then I'm gonna overlap it, plug weld it to here. But what I'm gonna do first is patch this and make a piece with like a one inch lip or whatever like this. So that way I can just like lay that piece of metal in here and just plug weld it all in there. And then basically all I have to do is make a little piece for the back here. I just went and checked the other car for the seat bracket and it's not totally gone, but it's, it's, it's got holes in it and it's pretty much in the same state. So I'm not even gonna bother drilling these out and you know, taking another one out because I probably won't even be able to get that one out in one piece. I also did check like the floor situation in the other car. That front corner is like identical. That one, same thing around that drain hole is a, it's a big, huge drain hole now. This is the only corner that is like worse on this car considering the rest of the shape of that car. I feel better fixing this than you know, dragging another car in here and doing everything else to it and this because it's the same. So I feel a little bit better about it, even though it still sucks, but we'll get it done. I'm going to start making a little piece for here and we'll see what that looks like. Now, this is basically the template done. Obviously it's rough, like it's cardboard, but now I have the general shape uh, and dimensions of everything. I'm going to trace it out on the metal now and then start cutting the metal out. So now that I got that made, I'll take this out and transfer it to the metal. I'm just gonna basically lay it on there, trace it out, and then cut the metal. Super simple, just cut it out. Now I'm just gonna take it to the car, drop it in. It should fit, and I guess we'll see if it does. A little finagling, and we got it in there. I know it still really doesn't look like much because there's just like a flat piece of metal stuck in there, but that's pretty much all it's gonna be. I might do a couple of little bead rolls, or whatever, just to kind of 
give it a little bit of strength back to it. So yeah, I think with this other piece of metal that I have available right now, might be good enough that I can start. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that piece made itself. Then once I get both of these back holes and areas patched, then I'll move to the front. Just has to basically be good enough. And I have a really hard time with that, but I keep telling myself, it's not supposed to be a nice car, not supposed to be look factory or anything like that. So just make it have no holes and we'll be good. Since I can't really go any farther with that side till I get more metal, I decided to use a little bit of metal that I did have and start on this side. Uh, this one's actually gonna be a bit more complicated than that one, um, just because it's actually smaller, so it's harder to do, which doesn't really make any sense. But once I explain it, it will. Instead of just making one big flat panel, I actually have to bend, you know, these, Kind of shapes and whatever into it and this one i've already got obviously it's not a big deal i have a break so i just bent it up real quick and that fits in there nicely like that the only problem now is the back here the floor is kind of like on this one level and then it has this big like half inch three quarter inch step up to here and then that means that this part is supposed to be actually flush with that part so it's obviously stamped from the factory this is all you know, pressed in or whatever, while that all the outer part is kept up. Basically what I'm saying is this edge, which is this edge, has to be equal height to this edge, which is this edge. So what I've done is I've sliced it here, and now what I'm gonna go and try and do is put this in the brake. I've marked it just by using a piece of tape. This is kind of like a little trick for you. If you can't really measure an area, just lay a piece of tape on it, mark your bends where you need them, and then you basically just take that off transfer it onto the metal. It's exactly what it is. You don't have to use the measuring tape or whatever. Also, pro tip, when you start making anything, brackets, pieces, you know, anything you're fabricating, always sand the metal first. Because when it's a flat piece of metal, whether you're making it out of flat stock, you know, sheet metal, anything like this, that you're gonna be bending and putting, you know, stuff that's hard to sand into it, always sand it first. That way when you're done the piece, it's sanded and you can just prime it and paint it. You don't have to sand it. So that saves a lot of time. There we go. I didn't film any of it, honestly. I was just trying to get it done. Basically what I did, I did the first bend uh, on the brake, but then after that, I couldn't get it in here because this part extended out past where I wanted to bend it, so it was just gonna kink. So what I did was I just held it um, up against the, the bench like this, pretty much. And then where this part folded and overlapped, I just snipped it off and kind of hammered a corner into shape. So now we've got like basically like a tray looking thing. And we drop this in, obviously it's still not fitting because I gotta do more bending and more cutting, but that's what it's gonna look like. So this follows all the way around and then hits up there. So I honestly think I might redo that side. And this is exactly what I was afraid of. I do it a little bit better each time and then I'm just gonna be really worried about making it look really good and like factory, even though it does not matter. I'm just gonna basically go and shave off the edge here so it's a nice straight cut. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically trace it on the floor of the car and then I'll cut that out and then I can basically drop that right in there and it should fit nicely. These lines here, I've pretty much decided they're a lot smaller. They're about like half, maybe even, yeah, probably half the height of that one. I'm just gonna try and like flatten them out and then kind of work it into the panel once I'm welding it in. So it won't be perfectly flat, but I'll flatten this out part as much as possible and then then that'll drop in there nicely. Also, I never mentioned it, but I actually did end up ordering the subframe reinforcement pieces because after my last video, somebody watched it and they messaged me and said that they bought some off of like a local guy. And he's not really local to me, but he's gonna ship to me for like 20 bucks and they're only like $120, like Canadian. So the ones online I was seeing were like 150 US plus shipping. So it was gonna be like $200 probably more than $200 Canadian with exchange and shipping and stuff like that. And then I can get underneath the car, clean all that up, weld those in, super easy. You don't have to really cut anything or whatever. And then uh, that'll be done. So then I'm just basically working on the floor inside. And then like I said, I'm gonna do the patches on the rockers, get all the metal work on the body done. This is exciting, we're having fun, it's going well. Not really, but we're making the best of it. I finally got gas for my welder. This little tiny tank, this regulator, and the hose to make it all work, $600, just so I can weld a floor in my piece of garbage BMW. What a time to be alive. I'm gonna mess with that patch. I didn't get any more metal because I was in such a hurry to leave at 4.30 to get to this place before five o'clock when they close. 
to get the gas so i'm gonna get it all hooked up make sure it works and then i'm gonna start cutting that patch out and welding it in we can be moving along pretty good now Not the prettiest thing ever, but it really doesn't have to be. I pop some holes in it. They're not very big. I'm probably gonna drill them out a little bit bigger. Um, just the tool makes them like that big. And then in the corner is a bit of a gap there. So I think I'm gonna add on a little piece underneath, but I'm gonna get this in first. I also kind of pounded in a little bit of like this shape to kind of just make it easier to weld. Let's we'll see how it goes. all welded in now it's not the prettiest looking thing ever but it really doesn't have to be now i'm gonna go over to that side uh, i'm gonna try and bring some metal home tomorrow and finish up that patch and then hopefully we can weld that patch in tomorrow and then maybe do the floor as well we got some metal and i already cut out a piece and bent it all up and everything it's kind of boring so i just skipped ahead but this is what we're talking about in here that'll go like that obviously i'm gonna cut the car out and then butt weld this in so it sits nice and flush and flat everywhere and then this piece that I made will just drop in there sit down and then I'll do the same thing I did on the other side pop a bunch of holes in here and drill them all out plug weld it and then uh, butt weld this and then do whatever type of welding I can I think underneath I can stitch this to the chassis like completely to the floor because it should be good and then here is gonna be kind of stuck underneath in between the floor and this like frame rail basically so some of that might not be able to get attached but obviously there's still tons of strength there um and then once that's in that's in then i'm going to worry about making the back of the seat bracket and then this corner will be done and that's gonna be sick okay so that's all cut out now and you can see there's a piece up there it's a little bit crusty spot welds to the piece so what i've done is i've went and drilled a couple holes in this and that will butt up to that. And I can plug weld that back to this piece. And then this will go in here like it's supposed to. It will be good. This is where we're at. I just ground all the welds down so now it looks nice and smooth. It's not perfect. The only thing I have to do is cut that hole out. Uh, that's for the uh, ABS sensor, I believe. That's fine, I can do that later. So now what I'm gonna do, I have to pop a bunch of holes in this edge and this back edge about to this Hump. get this all welded up and then uh, it should be pretty good honestly it's coming along pretty well anyways get this done drop it in there weld it and then basically all we have to do then is worry about the back of the c-bracket which sucks and i'm not stoked about it but whatever gotta do what you gotta do this is all done it's welded it went pretty well yeah, i just got to make a piece for the back of the seat bracket both backs are pretty much done i can move to the front so since the floor has that step in it now uh it's gonna make this a bit more difficult but what i've done is basically cut a piece out the length that i want so i'm gonna basically butt weld it on this end and then butt weld it on that end but what i'm gonna do is make this flange go all the way along down and then across and that's what i have here i've got it marked out so how I plan to do this, I'm not sure if this is the best way. I'm gonna bend that flange first, put it where I want it, then I will basically mark where that bend is and where that bend is. And then I think what I'm gonna do is like just make a slice here and then I'll be able to like bend it. So that will be one solid flange all along the bottom. Then I'll just have to trim out like the pie cut like excess and then weld that back together. Also, this is way too tall for what I need here. I literally need like an inch, but down here, I need three inches, so I have to make the whole thing three inches. And then I'll just trim out the excess. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna bend this on the brake, get that flange there, then I'll come back, mark it, and then hopefully slice it and bend it, and it should work out hopefully okay. After a lot of messing around, we kinda got a piece made for in here you can see we do have a bit of a chunk missing i could probably just weld that in um, but i'm not super worried about it all this is gonna be like really solid now I got all the plug welds i'm gonna put in down here and then i left this a little bit tall i'm gonna kind of wrap it around because it's a little rusty and uh yeah i'm gonna weld it all the way up here i just shot a little primer on the back side of here and 
all inside of there because it's all bare metal and it's gonna be pretty much like encapsulated now. So just gonna wait for that to dry. And then weld this sucker on there. Then we can finally move to the front of the car. So I'll save some time, we'll just do this. And there we go. All this is solid. It's like factory. I'm just gonna seam seal right over all this. Clean that up a little bit more. Seam seal that, seam all in this corner. And then maybe across the weld too. And yeah, now I'm gonna go to the front and start messing with that. I think I'm gonna take the door off. Um, I'm replacing these doors anyways, because like they're so rusty, they're completely gone. And it would just make it 10 times easier if I didn't have this door right here while I'm trying to get in here and work on this area. That was actually super easy. There's a little eight mil screw, you undo that, and then this thing will pop out, and then you just gotta slide this up, and then it completely unplugs, and then you just zip these off, and you're good. All right, now for this one, as you can see, I've cut a giant hole out, and uh, that's basically because there's so many weird little shapes and stuff. I don't know if you can see, but like there's a big drop there, and like all these weird shapes and stuff, but I decided to just cut the whole thing out, and then what I'm gonna try and do, basically make one flat piece, to go in here and then just put a bend here and then have it gradually go up to that point and then have a little bit, you know, here. And then, but this will all basically be flat. That way I'm not messing around with trying to weld over the humps and stuff. And then I'll have to make a little piece for this side here on the inner rocker and I'm gonna do that first. And then I'll basically worry about making this main piece, dropping it in, plug welding it, yada, yada, yada. Same thing. And then over here, unfortunately, this is like right on top of that's the that's fuel line you see there. And then the fuel filter and all that stuff is like right here. So this one, I'm not gonna cut out. I'm not gonna go crazy with it. I'm just gonna clean up the edges and just basically tack a piece of metal over that. And then I'm also gonna reinstall this lower cover. So it shouldn't get a ton of crap in there. And I know it's not the right way to like not cut it out, just go back over top of it. But I really don't wanna, you know, drop the whole, fuel line and all that crap. So it'll be fine. I'm just gonna tack a couple of welds in there, basically hold a piece in there so there's no hole, and then we'll just seam seal it. That way I'm not creating a bunch of heat and cutting and you know risking cutting the fuel line. This is all welded. It's not the greatest. So I got it all plug welded and all stitch welded all the way around it. I started grinding it, but I don't wanna do any grinding. So I'll work on that other patch that needs to be made for basically underneath the gas pedal. Basically a little plate to go here. Just gonna drop it in and I'm really just gonna like tack weld it, maybe throw a couple like stitch welds. I'm not welding it solid. I'm not cutting out underneath because I don't want to mess around with everything underneath there. So anyways, I'm just gonna take that out, prime the back side of that patch and uh, yeah, just basically tack it in. It'll all get seam sealed and whatever. And I do kind of want to put carpet back in the front of this car anyway. Um, so it'll never get seen. And if I don't do the carpet, I am gonna have to like make or get some toe plates because these floors, I don't know why, it's like a four inch drop in it. So you can't just take the carpet out because there's a giant chunk of styrofoam that fills the space. And so you have to make some sort of a flat panel, which I, I might do. I'm not too sure yet. All right, I haven't really filmed much. I actually haven't been out here that much, but I got that piece tacked in. Like I said, it's not pretty, but it's gonna get seam sealed and probably just paint it some whatever gravel guard black just quickly to seal it back up. But I started on the other side and same thing on this side. It wasn't this big, but just the shape and obviously like, and actually this one is much worse. It's got this big hump up here and super weird shapes. So. I haven't really got into it too far with making that panel, but I have the inner rocker cut out and I have a piece made for that. So I just gotta weld that in and then make a quick panel um, for that section and then weld that in. But yeah, this has been a super long process. I was not expecting this to take this long or like even need to do this in the first place, but it is what it is. It's done and uh, it's almost done. And then I'll have like, a semi-solid car. This video was a lot longer than I originally anticipated. I kind of wanted to show, you know, the majority of that. Obviously I skipped, you know, quite a few steps and stuff, but basically that is the gist of it. This side is still not done, but it shouldn't take too long considering I've done, you know, the rest of it in just a few days. For the next video, I'm going to get into the rear subframe area because that will be done. I'm gonna do the other rocker, which I don't know if I showed it, but I'll show it in the next one, it's really bad. But now that we have the inner rocker and the floor rebuilt on that side, it should be a piece of cake to basically just bend up the rocker panel, cut out the old one, you know, 
splice it in basically weld it to the good metal and that'll be done so that shouldn't take too too long hopefully and then we can get into underneath this car reinforce it with the plates that i have now so we'll get those in and then probably bring the other car in drop that subframe hopefully you enjoyed this video and seeing my misfortune unfold in the form of this car having no floor so now at least it does have a floor and i won't fall through on the track so that's good and yeah we can just basically continue where i thought we were going to be when i first bought this car but anyways hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you want to give it a thumbs up that'd be sick if you want to subscribe if you're not that'd be really cool also if you have any friends with garbage e46s that need to do this you should probably share this video with them so they know that they're not alone and it gets better but anyways that's gonna do it for this video and i'll see you in the next one